Hey guys, this is Scotty with Trek Pro City in beautiful Victoria. Uh, it's winter time, we're thinking about trainers. Maybe you haven't bought a trainer yet and you're thinking of, oh, do I get a smart trainer or a dumb trainer or a regular trainer? I don't know the difference. That's what we're talking about today. Differences between a regular trainer and a smart trainer. All right guys, so we are taking a look right now at the Saris Fluid 2 trainer. Uh, this is an awesome trainer for the money. We have had this in our lineup for decades. Um, it's not a smart trainer, it's a dumb trainer, it's a regular trainer. It is gonna get you exercise. That is its main goal. It is a pretty simple unit. You've got a frame that holds your bike. You've got a resistance unit on the back that your tire touches that's gonna provide resistance, makes it feel harder. The nice thing about the Fluid 2 is it's got a progressive resistance, so it gets harder as you work harder. However, there's a limit to that. If you're really hammering and you're a strong rider, you'll be able to spin out one of these um, after you know about 1200 watts or so. Uh, it's a lot. You're not gonna do that for very long. Um, the benefits of a Basic trainer like this are the cost compared to a smart trainer. These guys, we retail them at $399 at the Trek bike store in Victoria. Um, you know, you can get a magnetic version that's even more simple for like $250. So pretty economical. You get this, you don't need a subscription to anything. You put your bike on, you pretty much have everything you need. Maybe a few extra accessories and you're good to go and get some exercise. Lots of people train this way. Great way to go, nice and affordable. All right, one thing you will need with the basic Saris trainer is a front wheel block. Uh, this is a climbing block, so it has different positions that can get higher. This one's pretty gross. It's been used very heavily. Um, but basically you need to get your front wheel higher off the ground because your rear wheel is higher. If you just put it straight down, it'll feel like you're riding downhill all the time. You can buy more basic blocks. You can build one out of a two by four or an old phone book that you don't use anymore. Front wheel block is necessary. All right, so the other style of trainer that is really popular and the one that most people are buying now is the smart trainer. Um, so this is an example of one of the premium smart trainers out there. This is the Saris H3. Um, this is a wheel off style smart trainer. So what that means is we take the rear wheel off of our bike and we put our bike frame onto this unit versus the smart trainers that look a lot like a basic trainer where you've got a frame and your tire still touches a resistance unit. The wheel off style is definitely the way to go. It's probably double the price, but you're not wearing out tires. It's sturdier frame, so you can power down a little bit harder. Um, that's kind of the theme for most people now is to try to get a wheel off trainer. So what is a smart trainer? Why is it smart? Basically there's a resistance unit inside of this it pairs with a computer app like Zwift or Ruby, or there's a few others out there. And when you're climbing uphill on that app, it actually gets harder. So you have to shift your gears as if you were outside. Um, it is very realistic. It's basically like gaming on your bicycle. Um, it is much more engaging because you're riding through virtual worlds and up volcanoes and around corners. Um, and it gets harder and easier based on going uphill or downhill, depending on the percentage grade of the hill that you're on. So it's much more realistic. Uh, it's much more engaging. I mean, a lot of people are on Zwift and you can ride with your friend in Australia or wherever. Um, it's definitely a huge growing market and what most people are looking for in a trainer these days. You also have pretty unlimited resistance out of these. I mean, they, I think there's a 1800 watt, watt max on this unit. Not very many people can push that kind of wattage. Um, but there's times where you're climbing up a really steep hill and you're in your easiest gear and you're just like you're outside. Oh, I wish I had an easier gear. Um, so the realistic aspect of these smart trainers is why they are sought after. Uh, this retails at 1350 Canadian in our store at, at Trek Bikes Victoria. So it's not the cheapest unit and that's the drawback to them. They're, they're more money. And then you're also gonna need to pay for a subscription to Zwift or some other uh, system um, and then there's accessories that you need for this as well you you need to add a cassette or take a cassette off of your bike to put it on none of the smart trainers these days come with cassettes um, 
There's a few other accessories that we'll talk about in another video. And we'll also do a demo of this with uh, maybe with the MP1 platform and some of the other toys that we've got here uh, at Trek Pro City. So stay tuned for that, check it out up there. And thanks for watching.